put up against here and everything like that. It's good. Tonight we're going to discuss an interesting case from the practice of Dr. Soloway. This can be considered a lecture on giant cell arteritis, or this can be considered a board review course for medical students. I'm sitting here with one of my good friends, Tim Liskey, who is my loyal x-ray tech of 20 years. Tim is involved in the care of the patients here. Excuse me. Six months ago, a 63-year-old white female presented to a regional medical center with fevers, sweats, drenching night sweats, fevers up to 102. She wasn't feeling well. She was losing weight. She was seen by a hematologist. Her hemoglobin was 9.5. She had pain in her shoulders and her hips. She was in the hospital for approximately three days. She was discharged with a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. She was treated with prednisone, low dose, and methotrexate for a prolonged period of time, more than one year. Over the past month and a half to two months, she presented to her rheumatologist and she complained of a new cough. She complained of eye pain, unilateral headache over the eye, tenderness in the scalp, and difficulty chewing her food. She could swallow fine. She did have early satiety, and she noted a weight loss of about 10 pounds over three months. She developed sweats again, and with this information, she was seen by the rheumatologist, and at that point, the rheumatologist ordered blood work. The patient, being a dentist, being very astute, went online on Google and determined that she had either giant cell arteritis or temporal arteritis or polymyalgia rheumatica and started to question her diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. She called and asked to be prescribed prednisone. She waited three weeks and after three weeks she was called in prednisone 60 milligrams per day. After three days she felt lightheaded taking the prednisone and therefore the doctor told her to stop taking the prednisone. It was about a month later that I met her for the first time when she presented to me with loss of lateral vision in the right eye and difficulty walking properly. She was stumbling as she walked. She was accompanied by her husband who helped her into the office and onto the table. She told me the story of the trouble swallowing food, the new cough, the weight loss, drenching night sweats, and I asked her to recap her history. When she told me the story from the initial hospitalization, she described a classic case of PMR, but was labeled as seronegative RA. She was treated with methotrexate and low-dose prednisone. The drug was discontinued at one point when she was feeling okay, but this is when our information from me to you starts. Polymyalgia rheumatica can mimic rheumatoid arthritis. It presents with proximal girdle pain. Whites outnumber blacks, but it is common in blacks as well. Women outnumber men, not as much as rheumatoid arthritis. The disease is very similar to seronegative RA. The difference being in RA, the rheumatoid factor and CCP are usually positive, usually involve small joints in a symmetric pattern. However, in PMR, we can typically expect resolution of disease when treated properly with low-dose steroid being weaned slowly, resolution over about two years, occasionally a little longer. I often tell patients if their disease does not get better in two years, they either have giant cell arteritis or they actually have seronegative RA. That would depend on the joint distribution and the symptoms the patient has. The other point here is when a patient has polymyalgia rheumatica, as this patient clinically did, 
a relapse often occurs in the form of giant cell arteritis, not polymyalgia rheumatica. And as we should know, blindness and stroke are the ominous problems that occur if these diseases go untreated. I opted to give this patient pulse steroids as an emergency basis, trying to prevent further loss of vision and loss of what I believe to be a stroke, perhaps in evolution. Temporal artery biopsies had never been ordered. MRI of the brain had never been ordered. And frankly, other than a set rate of 65 and a C-reactive protein of 125 and a hemoglobin of 9 grams, there wasn't much other information for me to go on except the clinical history, which to me was cinched by the new cough and jaw claudication on top of a classic history of polymyalgia rheumatica. The patient received the pulse steroids and is currently in the process of seeing an ophthalmologist looking for ischemic optic neuritis. The patient is in the process of having an MRI with contrast of the brain and orbits and getting temporal artery biopsies. My plan for this patient since the course of treatment has been delayed and things have gone on so long would be to start high dose steroids and immediately use tocilizumab or Actemra, the interleukin-6 inhibitor that is indicated for giant cell arteritis in the self-injectable form, and I will do this immediately. If you have any questions, I feel free to honor your request, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. If you have other topics of interest, I will honor all requests. Thank you.